Good evening and welcome to Plain Talk. It's my pleasure, Christopher Ram, once again to welcome you and to invite you to share the next hour with me. Of course, this program is rebroadcast on Channel 7 at around 5.30 on Sunday evenings. My guests this evening are Mr. Dennis Chabral from Demerara Waves, an online news service, and Mr. Enrico Wolford, well-known broadcasting personality and famous for his very incisive and sometimes humorous pieces on Capital News. Gentlemen, welcome to Plato. Thank you. Thank you very much. For both of you, this is the first time you're coming on Plain Talk post May 2015. How has the media scene changed with the change of administration? And I mean in terms of access to politicians, governing politicians, in terms of access to public information. Anyone of you can start. I would say that there has been some change, but it all depends upon um, how one looks at access and how one looks at um, freedom of uh, or freedom of, or, or access to information. The politicians bo on, on both sides now, both the government and what will constitute the the, the political opposition. Uh, feel that there is a need to get information out there. The issue now is that the government has um, not had a very clear um, media policy as far as I'm concerned, and they, they need to work on that to make sure that people understand their policies. One of the problems that we've always had in this country is that uh, politicians in particular, and in particular government people, think once they've spoken to media uh, that they're comfortable with, uh, be it government media or media that they think they know the people very well, um, then they have sent their message out there. And that, I think, is a continuing problem. Just speaking to, to, to people that you're comfortable with. And I, I, and I think the government has taken that position, and I think it's a little bit un unfortunate. Okay. Dennis? Of course, I think that uh, we are still at the 100 day phase, so to speak, where uh, everyone is trying to ascertain where each other generally stands. In terms of access, I would say that. You, when you say we, we, the media. Oh, you mean the media? Uh huh. Yes. Um, in terms of access, I would say that it is fair. Um, I would also uh, say that it was much easier to access the, 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 the members of the then opposition who are now in government. But now I would imagine because of their, uh, of their duties as ministers, it is uh, slightly more difficult. I would say, though... Are um, you suggesting then you have difficulties accessing ministers? Yeah, yes. Uh, in, in some instances, um, it is pretty much difficult now to access certain persons who you have otherwise access pretty much easier prior to the elections. Um, I would say, though, comparatively speaking, it was always much easier to gain access to a PPP minister um, even up to the time that they left office, I and, that, and that's across the board. Uh, that was pretty much across the board, compared to now, where a lot of the ministers, perhaps because they're still trying to get their feet wet during this critical period, or they're just generally hard to get, and I, I know that for a fact. Yes. Uh, and Enrico, um, I've heard that complaint from several persons about several ministers. They just are inaccessible. They don't take calls. They don't return calls. H has that been your experience as well? I've heard the same thing, and that's what I'm saying. There, there needs to be a media policy within the government. Oh, when you say policy, you meant in terms of access? Uh, in terms of how they 
they can be accessed. What I think has happened is that you now have you, you now have ministers in place and you have gatekeepers from the old administration who are there and they apply the same um, principles. You know, you call the secretary and then you call the assistant and so on. Um, and by the time you actually get through to the person, it, you might as well go to the corner knowing where they lie and speak with them. Um, I, I, and I think that is one of the, that's why I said there needs to be a policy overall with, 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 in terms of government information as to how you can, uh, members of the media can access uh, these persons because you, you, have, you now have two layers, an old layer and a new layer. The new layer, as, as um, Dennis said, is trying to find I I its way, and the old layer is applying the principles of, uh, of, of the public service rules and, and what have you. One what positive thing, though, Chris, I would say, is that at the weekly post-cabinet briefings, we're seeing a new feature, and that is the presence of a sectoral minister who can speak on specific areas uh, in contrast to the situation where you had uh, the then head of the presidential secretary, Dr. Roger Luncheon, basically outlining policies on almost any sector uh, during the PAP's uh, time in government. That is a good thing that we're having now where a sectoral minister is present. But in terms of a minister actually uh, answering his cell phone, uh, being ready to speak with you, returning calls, that is not happening in the way that we would like to see it, especially dealing with critical and controversial issues. You know, this is something I think we have to confront and we have to be se serious about. Lots of ministers, and I don't take this point, that it's the old guard. I know, I know one minister who said, look, I can't even take your call on my cell phone because my so-called media person is going to be upset with me. That is absolute rubbish. That is nonsense, and I, I wouldn't call the person's name, a colleague of mine, I wouldn't take a call. But, as you said, that is the, 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 the issue. Um, when, I, when I said access, I was thinking both in terms of persons and in terms of information. Is it easier now, having regard to what Dennis has said slightly more strongly than you have, um, Enrico, is it easier now to access information? It, it all depends upon what you want to get. Like we are for what the media wants. To what, 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 what the media wants. And um, you have me thinking there as to why someone would want to, to guard himself behind a, 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 a media person. But what, what I was going to say uh, before you went off there is that the issues are a little fuzzy at, at the moment because I think the portfolios are fuzzy. Um, and when you, when you look at the Gazette, um, there, it's, it's sometime, some, sometimes a little confusing in my mind. I might be the one uh, being confused. As to, let's take public infrastructure, for example. Is uh, that ministry responsible for telecommunications um, as against... Um, what the Ministry of Information, what the, the, the Prime Minister is responsible for in terms of telecommunications and what do you call telecommunications? I, I'm talking from an area that I think I yes. know a little bit about. What do you call telecommunications? Um, aeronautic and um, maritime uh, communication, does it really fall under the, the uh, telecommunications sector? as against um th so there 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 you know there 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 seems to be cross um mm -hmm. uh, an overlapping in, in some cases and um social protection what really is it uh, and 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 what areas um it, it's responsible for um and not social co social cohesion i mean um what is there's it? Social and what cohesion, it, and there's another one. There's social protection, protection, and I mentioned social protection. Social protection is a little easier to to define um, and delineate. Um, I, again, the Ministry of the Presidency, you have uh, Lieutenant Colonel Harmon with a, with a slew 
of um, of, of ministries uh, falling under his uh, well, ministries, departments, um, and, and policy departments areas. And so on. I think he's um, almost so a deputy president. I, you know, I think I, almost one <laughs> one runs into. Um, uh, 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 clear lines of of of, of, of what need well, what, what what you can get and what you can't get. Uh, you know um, the system is when the president and we we talk about the constitution. When the president appoints his cabinet, he gives them whatever instrument, and that instrument is replicated in a constitutional gazette. So you have the president, what he's responsible for, the prime minister, what he's responsible for. I think the next one was probably the, the first vice president is probably um, Kemra Ramjatan. The most senior vice president is, of course, the prime the minister. Prime minister. Mm -hmm. Then you've got Ramjatan. I think Mr. Greenwich is another vice president. Um, have you looked at those at that gazette? Because that's where it is. But I, I can say this. There are a number of areas that have been left out, and you don't know where they do fall. Well, that's exactly the point but I was making. The, the, the law is this. The Constitution says this. If a function has not been assigned, because all functions, remember we have a Constitution that says the president is the executive, mm -hmm. and the president merely delegates. Mm -hmm. So, and therefore, what is not delegated remains with the president. Yes. But then you're left to, to wonder. You have to think, well, w after you've read about 15 pages, because uh, Mr. Harmon has a tremendous portfolio, it runs into more than two pages, I think. Um, whereas the Prime Minister has about half a page, or just mm -hmm. about. So you're left wondering, well, which one is left out? So I, I, I think you're, you're, the point you're raising is very pertinent, but pertinent, but I believe I believe it's the job of the media to point that out. It's well, the job that's, of the media that's in some why you respects. Have this program. But, but it's also media. part of the responsibility of a new administration that has renamed a number of ministries to embark on a public awareness drive. Yes. What are these ministries and, and what are their responsibilities? It is not only for us as members of the media, but for the wider Guyanese public. I want to know about consumer protection. Okay, it is this ministry that I need to go to. Mm -hmm. So those are responsibilities of a new government, especially where ministries have been released. Other than, other than in that gazette, uh, which of course was reproduced in some of the newspapers, have we had any serious discussion about it? I uh, hope this one is. I mean, <laughs> and I think we tend to, we in the media tend to, um, uh, what you call it, criticize ourselves, uh, be, be so critical as if, we have this overarching role of doing all the Dennis Vote is quite yourself. right. The voters voted on May 11 for, for these people. The voters have a responsibility to ask and to, to uh, demand that we need to know, we who are living on the dam along Lane Avenue, if we have to move because we have been, be, 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 be been um, here squatting over these years and whose ministry it is that will make those decisions. The public service ministry, the public um, infrastructure ministry may say, yes, we need to put drag lines along here. The ministry responsible for local government or communities or whatever needs to say, well, this is my responsibility to make sure that these people are relocated to a proper place. Plus you so, have ministry of social responsibilities, you and, say? Uh, a minister of social protection Check and so protection. on. So how do you move? Um, how do you deal with that? How do you deal with drainage and irrigation? How do you deal with, 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 with aerodromes around the country? All of those things, uh, the public needs to be informed about. And Dennis, Dennis hit the nail on the head when he said, it, 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 a public awareness campaign needs to be there. And I began by saying they need to have a public uh, a media policy that clearly says these are the things that we are covering but, um, but and so on. I, I most certainly agree with you. And, and this government cannot claim it doesn't have access to the media. No. It, that would be the last of the claims is a government in Ghana under this present arrangement can be. You have NCN, you have Chronicle, you have China. 
almost all every day you see a set of political faces in the newspapers. So that's not a problem. How would you recommend they address it? If you were to advise them. As a person who interacts with the public, who well, interacts uh, with the public. Uh -huh. As I said before, it is the responsibility of the government to embark on a public awareness campaign. Also, as part of the media policy to which Enrico referred, or a media policy, there needs to be a clear understanding that while you may have fairly good working relationships with certain members of the media, because there is where resources are built and all of that, in many instances, the, the access has to be based on the principle of equity and not favoritism for whatever uh, means or requirements there may be other than professional journalism. I'm going to put it as uh, succinctly as that because I know there are instances, in, particularly in a vital sector in the history of this country today, where a particular government official is only accessible to certain members of the media and is not accessible to others when we're dealing with a particular sensitive matter. And that is because that particular member of the government believes perhaps that he can access certain favors or that he can also hoodwink certain reporters because he does not want to face probing um, questions. Is that, is that improper? There we go. Anything like that would be improper, Chris. And, <laughs> and, 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 and that, that, is, that is where I am. That, that, that is where I began, and that is, that, that is my position. That you cannot decide that because you have, and, 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 and you, you're, in, you're, you're saying nearly the same thing, that you have access to the state, and you have access to Gina, and you have access to um, this other. Uh, uh, a chronicle or what have you, that you have reached your audience. And I think that is a problem. The same way that we would be foolish to think because we are um, doing this program on one television station and it's being rebroadcast on another, that we would have reached all the people on Facebook and all the people on Twitter and all the people it's in, also on YouTube. in Let Them. It and, goes and on YouTube as well, but, but even it still so, does not. I agree with you. Even so, we ha therefore you need a policy that makes sure that you are reaching the audience uh, that you are um, you, you intend to reach. And the, 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 medias, the medias are, if you want to call it that, um, must work out a policy. You ask me if I were to advise them, then you are a chartered accountant. You are also an attorney. You know that they, they, um, that uh, since the Phoenicians invented currency, there is no better way of do doing business. So <laughs> if they want, they can pay, and then we'll give them some advice. Um, you're not plugging for for work. I was therapy. plugging for attorneys. And <laughs> <laughs> um, the Chronicle. It's. You've seen quite a, a drastic overhaul of the Chronicle, um, the kind of news, the faces you used to see before May 11th. Things have changed a lot in that place, haven't they? Well, I disagree. I disagree as well. And I'll tell you why I disagree. Sorry. <laughs> Who wants to go first? Uh, I'll tell you why I disagree. <laughs> I, I hope you don't disagree and you're disagreeing. No, I mean, you're not disagreeing. <laughs> I just want to go through. I always remember my, my, my late brother, Ashley Wolford. Normally, she's my mother, Enrico. No, but this one, the, the, I, 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 Ash, Ashley was quite a character. Ashley we used to say that the way we have state media in this country is we are reading um, uh, during one uh, administration. Uh, President uh, Donald Ramatar said today, excuse me, he's the, just had the election, the president has changed. He turned the paper over. Oh, President David Granger said today, <laughs> so all, all we have done is to replace the faces and replace the mask. And one must not fall into that, um, that kind of trap. And that is why I keep saying, uh, the late Terry Holy used to say, you can't talk to your five friends at the bar and think you've spoken to the world because you'll be talking to yourself. And to say that, oh, the state media has changed, what has happened is that we have changed people <laughs> uh, in terms of who you're reporting on at, 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 at the moment. Sorry, Dennis. Yeah, I, I fully agree with what Enrico has said. 
And I think part of the problem relates to self-censorship by persons who have grown accustomed to a particular way of doing things. That may be one element. Then there are those who are still part of the old order, whether they mean well professionally or not, they believe that they have to go the extra mile to please their new political bosses. And those two elements constitute grave dangers as far as the content of the state media is concerned. I think, based on my experience, that uh, for the first time in the history of this country, we are at a stage where there is immense potential for the state media to perform its role, uh, notwithstanding the fact that there are new political bosses in terms of the delivery of information for all and sundry um, based on proper ethical guidelines and journalistic standards, fairness, objectivity, and so on. Um, but I think we have got to guard against those who believe that they have to curry favor to the new bosses, and also we have got to be on the lookout for, a set for those who self-censor. And I think that is where the flip side of the pages, as Enrico refers it, to, isn't that becomes relevant. A real danger in an environment like Guyana, small, um, if you get shut out by just one part of the government, you, you're probably shut out by almost every part. Um, you, you, you said um, ministers favor some reporters over others, and therefore you, if, if a, you know a minister doesn't like you to start with, it gives you a rough time, um, you're going to be very careful. You're probably going to pander to him or her. Is there a danger in this country that the media operators pander to not only politicians, but to an accountant who they may know. Um, look, I, I can get him to give me a, a comment very quickly, so let me not write anything too adverse about him. Is there that danger? And is it real? It's always theoretically possible. Is it real? Does it happen? It's practical, and it's real, and it happens anywhere, any part of the world. Guyana is not unique in the sense. But I think what it does we make it what we Acceptable, need, no, what we need are properly trained journalists and reporters who must know that they must stand that they must stand their ground and that there has to be a professional relationship between the interviewer and the interviewee. Between you as the reporter and the person the accountant, for instance, I don't know Mr. Ram, um, who is being interviewed, that Mr. Ram must understand that I will ask him the tough questions regardless. But we must still have a professional relationship. You I need not say anything else. You have I that mean, problem. The, um, have the and how has it changed over time? Look, it's it's very difficult to judge the APNU plus CFC coalition government in a short period. So when we're talking, we're talking over a, a panorama of a, um, and a landscape of some years. One, I uh, um, let, let me pick you up on this APNU EFC coalition. The coalition happened before the, um, the election, which means whatever we have is, or should be, a one government. Uh, um, whether, they, whether it's made up of, of, of seven parties or so on, it, mm -hmm. we, we should have one government in, in theory. And that one government must um, respond to the electorate in the same way that any government needs to respond to the electorate. And journalists, uh, reporters must be prepared to ask questions, uh, must be, be prepared to uh, send the message to the politicians and, 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 and the government. And the message from the um, politicians and the government must reach the people in a way that the people understand and in a way that the politicians understand whether they are doing their job is a, is a matter of accountability and credibility. And again, we, 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 I'm, I'm always amazed that people will come up to you and this is your role as a journalist. This is what you have to do. We are doing about this. We are doing about this <laughs> and so on. I have, well, I'm, I'm, not a, I'm, I'm not an attorney and I'm not a, a, a chartered accountant. 
I think Chris Ram, I think any attorney, I think any doctor will, um, will take objection to somebody coming up and saying to them, you know, I think this is how uh, the, you as a doctor need to perform this operation. And this is the way you as an, an accountant need to do this or, or, or do that. Uh, 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 and, um, but that should not give a, a journalist or a reporter that a bombacity, if that's a, uh, that's a, a word, uh, that pompousness uh, and that, um, well, well, uh, well, what I'm noticing is, is celebrity journalism that uh, we are present in, here this evening. We are more important <laughs> um, <laughs> than the persons we, as journalists, are prepared to serve. We are who, merely who, we who as do, journalists are do, merely who voices. Do journalists serve. We More are merely journalism. we are merely mirrors of the society. We are merely voices and conduits to ensure that messages so, go. So when so when the when, uh, in, when the in public between. when the public members of the public come to you and say, "What are you doing about this?" Isn't it their way of saying, "Look, will you please assist us in getting answers to these questions Not and troubling issues?" Not necessarily. They expect you to offer an opinion on a particular issue that they are aggrieved about. Mm -hmm. It is not that they expect you to go and cover the issue, but they want to hear your opinion. And uh, that is not necessarily our major role. Mm -hmm. While in the case of um, certain stations and publications, you will have um, commentaries and editorials. But largely our role is to cover the issues and events that make the news. Because we come, as, as Dennis said, it, 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 it's not always our role, because we come from a satisfaction culture. We, we feel that once uh, we um, air off our, our grievances to the journalists, and the journalists say, yes, you know, you're right, they, we, we, we should talk about this. Even if you don't talk about it, they get satisfaction. Yeah. And we, we, we should not um, continue in that satisfaction culture. We should continue in the accountability culture where the reason you're elected is to ensure that the drains are, are clean. The reason you're elected is to ensure that the aircraft can land and take off safely. The reason you're elected is to ensure that the rice industry can function and, um, uh, and, and there's transparency and there's accountability in society among uh, a, a myriad things. I'm glad, you, I'm glad you raised transparency because I was going to ask that we move on. Um, Enrico, you and I were there at the founding of the um, Transparency Institute. Mm -hmm. The Freedom, the Access to Information Act, in many in many countries, is called um, Freedom of Information Act. Was criticised by the Transparency Institute and its directors as being deficient and defective. It didn't provide speedy mechanism for accessing public in information that ought to be public. Has there been a change by the media to use the Freedom of Information Act to get information out of the for the benefit of the public? Public information for the benefit of the public. And if what if not, why not? Because if you read if you read the Guardian, the New York Times, you often see this information was obtained as a result of a request under the Freedom of Information Act or something. Why don't we why why do media personnel in Guyana not use that access to information act? Chris, you know the answer, you're asking the question. <laughs> the answer is that we have the public a, doesn't know. We, <laughs> we have, Thank you, Dennis. <laughs> we have um, a Freedom of Information Act, and we have a access to information. Uh, yes. An access of information act, sorry, and we have all these things, um, but we really don't have an office um, through which we can do it. We 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 have a a, a gentleman who considers himself learned. And... Um, who are you speaking it, about? Uh, we have a gentleman who considers no, but who himself is, who is learned. Who is this gentleman? And he 
feels that they You mean commif that commission of information we have a gentleman. No, no, no. We, the public, um, we're talking to the public. We can't tell them that we have a gentleman. We have Mr. Charles Ramson is the commission of information. He considers himself learned. And as a result of that, to get information, the Transparency Institute attempted to get information. And he wrote uh, a letter that was long on words and short on action. Yes, but what did Transparency Institute do about it? The Transparency Institute made an announcement, said what, is, what has been happening, and I think it's up to the people of the country to say to the administration that this is unacceptable. If you have a Freedom uh, Access to uh, the Information Act, it should be something that we as the people can operate within that, uh, the, the, that, that framework. The other thing about the Access to Information Act is that there, there are so many limitations within it. So the new administration must have a, a, a rethink and a, a relook at, uh, at that uh, act and see how we could, as a state, um, uh, develop it and, 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 and get it to, 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 to be a useful tool in ensuring that uh, governance is done properly and also to look uh, and see how the, the office uh, can be um, can be redone of the learned gentleman, the gentleman who considers himself to be learned. In, in your your practice, your your organization, what use has it made of the Freedom of Access Information Act? None, and that is not only confined to Demerara Wales. It it also extends to uh, most of my other colleagues and, and, and entities in the media. And um, that is because, based on experiences uh, like the one the Transparency International went through, uh, we don't consider um, the process to be very facilitating um, in terms of um, approaching that office and getting the requisite information. Um, that said, though, I, I would urge, and I think uh, this goes for all of us in RICO, I think we even discussed this recently an mm -hmm. at an executive meeting of the Press Association, that we ought to uh, increasingly put the system uh, to the test uh, to see what response or responses we will get and to take it from there. Uh, so at, at least we'll have an evidence, more of an evidence-based position uh, when we would have gotten our responses. Has this matter been raised at any time in any of the press conferences by any of your members? No, not as far as I know. Not as far as I recall. But we raised it as uh, within our media body. And I'm certainly hoping that um, <coughs> Transparency Institute take it very seriously and, and get some changes. It clearly was not intended to produce information. In fact, um, from all appearances, it was really there to just say we have an access to information. We have, you remember, Enrico, um, especially, but Dennis, you know as well, um, this issue of all these licenses that Mr. Jagdio gave surreptitiously before he demitted office. What was your expectation on May the 15th, I think, when the results of the elections were declared and there was a change of administration? What was your expectation with respect to those licenses that had been issued? I didn't even have to wait until May 11. As you know, Chris, and I think some of the members of the public, and Dennis, of course, knows that. Uh, I, through um, Attorney Rex McKay, we took the government um, uh, to, to court, and, and the matter is still there. Um, I don't think anything has moved on it, as to the unfair treatment, uh, the unjust um, way it was done in terms of the distribution of, of, of frequencies and, uh, and license. Um, 
Is I, it just unjust? Or, or is it your, the view of your council that it's unlawful? It's unlawful. It's, it, was, it, it was wrong. It was just immoral, illegal, and everything. It was just plain wrong. I have been on the record over and over saying that, and therefore one needs to see if a review of, of in fact, there ought to be, that's why I asked you what was your of, expectation of, 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 of the license. Um, and I think the court needs to declare on it. The administration needs to declare on it. And, and they've been sending out um, uh, uh, test balloons, so to speak, uh, talking about it. And uh, the authorities that are responsible for it need to declare on it. Um, this is the... Yeah, the National Broadcasting the Authority. The Broadcasting Authority and the, and the National Frequency Management. You just don't wake up as the, uh, as the president and call uh, the HPS and say to the HPS, call uh, Valmiki Singh and, and, and give the Chinese a, a frequency under the name of, uh, of, of NCN and, and then give my five friends and, 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 and fellow travelers and, and comrades uh, uh, some frequencies. That's not how you, you deal in, in, in a fair society. Well, yeah, but my but question this is might not be... Did you expect? Well, you expected the new, yes, the new society to be fair. Yes, of course, and therefore the new society has to move with alacrity, and um, with regard to how the, um, uh, the, the 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 license were distributed, and uh, and a need to 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 have a declaration either by the um, by, by the new administration, as I said, or by the courts. Your position, sir. Yes, I think that the. The issue has to be addressed uh, either legally or administratively or a combination of both. That is to say that the, the law needs to be amended um, to take into account um, the role that NFMU should play as well as the new broadcast authority. Um, from the look of things though, uh, Chris, it's, it is clear that uh, there was no strategic thought uh, Th that was uh, put into the way the frequencies should have been allocated. Um, it, so, it clearly shows there was a misuse in the allocation of the frequencies because um, I won't get into all of the technical areas. Yeah, but, but my question is, uh -huh. my question was, what were your expectations on May 15th? Whether you thought, I, I, I think the, the general consensus is that this was wrong, it was political abuse, and opportunism and dictatorship by Jack Rio, um in favor of a few friends. Did you expect the new administration to write those, what Mr. Wolford has described as wrong, morally improper, illegal, and lots of l Latin words in his legal action? Yeah, I would expect that that, uh, that steps be, be taken in, in that regard. Um, and it goes back to the point that Enrico made. I believe that a lot of this has to do with the amendment of the Broadcasting Act. I know efforts uh, were made by the then opposition, now uh, coalition and government, to have uh, the law amended so that uh, there could have been a level playing field and we can have people who are au fait with the industry uh, to fix these uh, wrong things and make them right. Yes, but that's to, to deal with any new situation. We're talking about those things that were were thought to be illegal and ultra, ultra virus and unlawful. Did you expect and should this government have said, look, we are carrying out a review of this. We would even join us to intervene in Enrico Wolfer's action. Well, yes, that's a fair expectation. Um, but I don't know. You're a, you're a lawyer here as well, Chris. I don't know what that means for private property and, and ownership and all of that. But clearly, uh, you acquire yes. it improperly. But then, what's the role of the state in terms of dealing with that? Those are the legal ramifications. But yes, I believe that the system uh, should have been fixed, or at least we should have had some serious signal from the government that the allocation of these frequencies uh, look, would have been... Look, some of these frequencies addressed. were allocated to entities that practically ceased. New Guy and the Company Limited. Who are they? Other than having cheated uh, investors for, for over 40, 50 years, never held a meeting, have been operating illegally, how could they have any moral claim to hold any license in this country? 
There's a question. Yes. Because uh, <laughs> I think couched in that, I, I think there, there was some shareholder um, issues coming out. Uh, <laughs> Um, yes, I'm the executive of my for my mother's will. And your I, mother and your mother has shares in the yeah, new Guyana company. Yes, um, for full disclosure. So, um, one. No, what I, what I meant, I, I have I have first hand information. Yeah, that's what I mean, and yeah. I have a direct interest. Uh, 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 and therefore, the administration needs to tackle it, and the administration needs to um, to speak uh, quickly and. Um, and precisely uh, on it, um, th there is no doubt about that, and I and I'm hoping, I, I, as, as the lawyers like to say, I have a legitimate expectation, <laughs> a legitimate expectation that something that will be done. A, that has a specific meaning in law. Though. Whatever the meaning is, I I don't know what the what what the public understands by it, but it, but you it, hope. <laughs> I hope that it will be done, and it will be done sooner rather than later. As a litigant in the matter, as a broadcaster, as a person who have spent your, your, uh, the better part of your life trying to acquire knowledge, expertise, experience, do you feel that the action taken by the government could be justified on the grounds of property rights and all of that, that don't you feel that you've been discriminated against? Oh, sure. And that is why we are in court. I mean, and that's why Mr. McKay has stated. No, I, I ask that question because, uh, because Dennis seems to think these people, having got it improperly, have now got a property right to it. No, I'm saying I don't know what are the implications. Yes. And that is something that needs to be addressed because it is all well and good for us to say, okay, go take back the frequencies, go and do this, go and do that. But I, as a layman, as a journalist, do not know what may be the legal ramifications. And therefore, I will turn to people like you uh, to tell us where, what are the rights and responsibilities and expectations. Because, you, Chris, you also, you also have conflicting interests. And um, one of the things that I remember uh, one of the uh, directors of GTNT said, there's, there's, there's something you could say about Guyana. It always has a uh, place for lawyers. So, <laughs> I think that's true of every society, uh, yeah. in, fairness, in fairness. Meaning, meaning that even if you, uh, if you were, so you don't want to get bogged down in litigation as to um, uh, conflicting rights as to whether it's a property right, whether it's... It, 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 but the, the whole thing is that there is a consensus, Guyanese like to say there's general consensus. There is consensus <laughs> that um, the, the way the thing was handled was, was done badly. The f and, 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 and some people believe that uh, because it, was a, it is a fait accompli, you can't do, really do anything about it. Um, so were a number of other things in the world. And, 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 and one goes back to correct the wrongs. Two wrongs don't make a right, but you have to first correct the first wrong. We're talking about the media tonight. How well organized would you say the media sector is and how well organized and then I'll ask you how effective but you can answer both at the same time it all depends upon what you mean by well organized a well, well, proper well, structure democratic structure it has a clear focus it has a mechanism for working those, towards those objectives it has a, a work plan it monitors it feed, gets a feedback it, it make adjustments. You know, you're One in could be cute and say it is as well organized as the Institute of Chartered Accountants or as well organized as the Gatta Bar Association. <laughs> I mean, one could be, one could be snide and, uh, and say but that. I but I know, but one would not be. But one would not be. One would say <laughs> that uh, there is, there, uh, and, and Dennis uh, cover, uh, covered some of, the, some of the weaknesses and some of the strengths. And that is, we need to look at uh, and operate in the way that journalists need to operate. We need to be trained. We need to read. We need to be informed before we can inform. We need um, to ensure that we don't fall into the danger of 
uh, being kind to some and unkind to others. Uh, uh, we don't uh, uh, self uh, uh, censor. Uh, we don't do all of these things that are not necessarily uh, good for the media. Um, but we are as organizers uh, as some associations, yes. <laughs> I would answer the question bluntly or as probably a little different by saying that an organization is as strong as its members. Um, and so how strong are its members? If you want to elaborate, if you want me to elaborate, I will say that... Uh, you know, you people, when you ask questions of, of the politicians and members, you expect direct answers. But we'd also expect you to await a proper response, and that is what I'm trying to do here. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Touché, touché. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, um, we have, as the Guyana Press Association, we have a we have a constitution, we have an executive, but what we require is the will on the part of our colleagues to uh, come on board in a structured manner in which they can take advantage of the benefits <coughs> of being part of the association as in terms of trading and exposure and uh, having their grievances addressed. People only come to the Guyana Press Association as they go to the trade unions or the Bar Association or the Institute of Chartered Accountancy if there is a grievance. I'm sure it's not a personal... No, it's <laughs> not. I'm just, I'm just saying fun. for smaller organizations, uh, even though they represent professional interests, People only see the value of those associations when there is a grievance. But we ought to be, and I think as far as the press association is, is concerned, that we have a critical role to play in the development of our profession. All right. Um, since we've brought the Institute of Charter Council Dan and the Ghana Bar Association into it, one of the hallmarks of of a profession is some level of training and um, ensuring that minimum standards are achieved before you can call yourself a journalist, before you can call yourself an accountant, before you can call yourself an attorney at law. Um, in addition, certainly among the accountants, there, there is continuing professional development, or sometimes called continuing professional education, so that you keep yourself um, you au fait with all modern developments. Um, I, the Bar Association is also moving towards that. Does that exist in the among the journalists? Well, we do not have a specific qualification requirement for you to enter the field of journalism. But the Press Association has over the years facilitated, organized, and executed uh, seminars and workshops and conferences, uh, both locally and overseas. How many did you organize last year, 2014? Um, I would say at least uh, three in three. Rico. At least three. Uh, but that said, I think the profession is at a stage where we, and where we would like to see more and more persons entering with some form of certification, whether a diploma or a degree from the University of Guyana or any other recognized institution. You see, the difficulty we face here, Chris, is that while one may want to say, okay, someone may be free to walk off the road, to use a colloquial expression, and become a reporter, mm -hmm. on the other hand, we do not want to find ourselves, and this has been discussed over and over, uh, both locally and in the Caribbean, where someone is uh, prevented from participating in, in a profession or being part of a profession where that critical and important element of freedom of expression, that is to receive and impart ideas, is not infringed in any way. So yes, your professionals as a chartered accountant, as an accountant and as a lawyer, you have specific qualification requirements, but then there is always that sensitive area as far as using a certificate, quote unquote, as a license for someone to be, quote unquote, a license for someone to become a reporter or a journalist. But with the evolution of the profession, the technology, and so on, I think there is greater scope for us to attach the requirement for 
some some form of certification, not to be used as a as a as a license or as a requirement, so to speak. But we need to follow certain guidelines. I don't know if Enrico, you you tend to agree or disagree. With and me. as as long as that certification is not, uh, as Dennis said, is not something that some other authority says that if you don't have this, then you are not a journalist. Uh, but at the same time, um, within the, the the University of Guyana, within the University of West Indies, and because um, there, there is a degree program, there is the a degree program, there is a diploma program, yes. um, and the same thing is you teach it. Does anyone you teach it? And that's where I was going. That um, uh, many of us are uh, go up there and do guest lectures, participate. Several persons within the media are continuing students at. Uh, uh, our students at uh, the University of Guyana and uh, therefore we are hoping uh, that uh, they can acquire the learning and one of the things uh, within the Guyana Press Association that we've been saying all the years is that journalists must also keep up to date, must read, must understand what is going on, must be able to to to, to be informed, must be informed before they can inform. It makes no sense going to press conference or, or any other thing and you haven't a clue um, as to what, uh, what, what, what are, the, are, are the, the areas you need to deal with. At the moment, you are strictly a self-regulated organization. Yes, and we will um, remain that way. You don't, uh, again, places like the Bar Association, the Medical Association, the Congress, um, are actually recognized by statute and they operate on the statute. You don't see the, the, the profession of journalism moving in that direction anytime soon, do you? I don't think it's a good thing because once you do that, you, you automatically involve and engage the politicians in the crafting of the legislation, which can have implications. All legislation is crafted by politicians. Yes, but I'm saying this is, as, as I sort of hinted earlier, Chris, the whole question of freedom of expression, yes, it comes with responsibility, but in terms of politicians having a role in, 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 in how these... But, but does it allow you, sorry, sorry to interrupt uh -huh. you, because the time is going, and I wanted one other question, maybe. does it allow you some authority to sanction people who act irresponsibly or outside of the norms of ethical journalistic... What has been promoted is the establishment of a self-regulatory media council, right, as opposed to having it in statute which has all uh, some, some other ramifications. Yeah, we won't want that at all. Well, what, well what, what, what I think we would want, though, is to have um, freedom of the press um, enshrined in the Constitution, um, because what we, what, uh, what we operate under is that's just the freedom of expression, which everybody can, uh, falls under. So journalists are, are not really special. They're, they're citizens with, with, with special access and spe Enrico, special privileges. Enrico, I'm glad you're so modest. I really am. Um, one final question. We've got a couple of minutes, I, I think two and a half minutes. Our libel laws, to what extent do they have what? I don't want to use the word lawyer again. The word is called the chilling effect. You're afraid to speak because somebody is going to bring a libel action against you. Go to court, get an injunction, and your freedom of speech is zipped up. Well, well we, we definitely, I, I think the, the, the criminal defamation thing we, 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 we've been advocating. It still is on the books, and the, Yes, the, the International uh, Press Institute has, uh, has, has uh, made It's a, been removed in almost uh, lots yes, of mo modern jurisdictions. Um, made quite an, uh, a noise about it. The uh, Association of Caribbean Media, the Ghana Press Association, all the media houses around the Caribbean. So you want that? What about, we, we what about, that what about the, 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 the whole the criminal issue? Yeah, the libel. whole what issue the of, uh, of the libel law, that does not, however, give um, celebrity journalists, uh, columnists, uh, whatever you want to call them, uh, the, 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 the right to libel people. I mean, we, we still have to operate within uh, the parameters of, uh, of, 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 um, of ensuring that but, what but we are balance, reporting, balance, yes. what we are reporting is uh, factual, and a fact merely marks a point where we allow investigation but, but, to cease. But you also have opinions. Therefore, you have you have a legitimate right, a legal right to. No, listen, yeah, but that you doesn't. Uh, you see, uh, the, the, uh, and Dennis Dennis raised this. Uh, the, the, they are journalists and so, they are so, columnists and they are um, so they are commentators. Are you in favor to this um, regular use of injunctions to shut down 
the media from discussing no we are not in favor, not in favor of that. but clearly as with all other rights there are responsibilities there are conditions you would not like someone to go on television or in the newspapers to say anything that uh, calls into question in any significant way your character uh, therefore there, there has to be some if it's true why not yeah if it's true that's another matter and that is a test also, the test in court also there, there the is test in the court is that it is it true yes and can you prove it yes if you can't well then you yes. deal with the consequences but, but, and, uh, as you know and I, I, one wants to stay away from law um, if you're going to say look I will justify my comment I will justify what I, I've said I will show that my opinions which I'm entitled to are based, have a factual basis. Um, because if you don't, don't you run the risk of shutting down legitimate journalism? You do, but if talk could uh, develop a country, we'd be the most developed country. So just talking about it and... Um, and well, how do we do it? How do we do it? Tell us. What, what uh, as I said since the Phoenicians, um, <laughs> what, what we need to do what we need to do is to, I, I, I don't always accept the, the use of the word responsible because sometimes the use of the word responsible responsibilities has to do with um, censorship. So what we, what we need to do is to just to get it right. Okay. It's simple as that. Which is not that easy to do on any occasion, even if Phoenicians found it difficult. Yes, they, they invented currency. <laughs> Enrico, <laughs> Mr. Enrico Wolford, Mr. Dennis Chaprol, Capital News and the Amaro Waves, respectively. Thank you so much for appearing in Blade Dog in this right, quite agitated at times discussion. Um, I, of course, I'd like to thank the operators and viewers. Um, once again, I have studio audi audience. Um, I look forward to seeing you again next week, and I think I have the assurance, Mr. Clinton Orling and Mr. Odinga Lumumba will be appearing on Plain Talk, and I think we all look forward to hearing their views on political developments, both from the government side and from the opposition side. So on that score, I'd like to say once again, thank you, good night, see you next week. <laughs>